Hello and welcome to another instructional video in which we'll be deploying Gigamon's GigaView Cloud Suite in an Azure environment. First of all, let's give you an insight into where we were deploying into. What we have configured here is a single VNet with four subnets. In each subnet, we'll set the individual components. In a single subnet, we'll have all of the controllers necessary for this Gigamon Cloud Suite environment. And then the others will have a vector brain, vector sensor, and the instances whereby we'll have the agents deployed into. Let's take a look at the prerequisites requiring for this deployment. First of all, we require a managed identity. So we need to assign this managed identity so that it can perform functions such as spin up the instances required for the full deployment. We must have then a SSH key so that the communication between the components can occur. A fully configured network, so that consists of VNet and resource groups. We already have that as we saw a moment ago, and a fully deployed vector brain and sensor fully communicating. So let's begin the deployment. What we're showing you here is the resource groups pertaining to this particular deployment. So these are the ones that we'll actually be using. Now this resource group is where we'll de be deploying the Fabric Manager. At the moment, it's fairly empty, but we do have the key and the managed identity already assigned to this resource group. So let's begin the deployment. So we want to navigate to the marketplace. We'll quickly here type in Gigamon. And it will find everything relating to Gigamon. Now we want to choose this one right here, Cloud Suite. We have various options, but the one nearest the bottom there, Gigaview FM, so Fabric Manager, and the Bring Your Own License. So we'll select this one. And it will begin taking us to the configuration page. And here we'll fill in the necessary details. So the resource group that we'll be deploying into, already established, Gigamon Manager. We'll then give it, well, the instance a name. We'll then need to uh, select the region we'll be deploying into. So by default, the resource group. Not to worry about the security type. There are various images, but we'll leave that because we've already pre-selected it. There are also different sizes, but we'll also leave this uh, as default. And then as we scroll down, additional information around connecting to this particular instance. So we're going to use a key for this particular one. Once we're happy, we'll move on to the next step. Now at this stage, by default, it will configure a single disk, but we actually require two. So at this point, we'll create an additional disk that used for this instance. Now the requirement is for two 40 gig disks. So we'll use the nearest size equivalent. So that'll be 64. The performance doesn't need to be anything spectacular. So we'll just choose something fairly low. And then we'll add that. 
you decide whether you want to delete the disks if you were in inclined to delete the VM later on. Nothing else required there. Now to networking. We don't want to create a new one. We already have our network defined and our subnet. Now for me, I require a public IP. This probably won't be necessary for most cases. It's just that I don't have a direct connection uh, to this image, so I'll have to go through the internet to reach it. We'll let it create a new security group. Because we're within or contained within the same, uh, the security group's going to be empty anyway, so anything's going to be allowed through. We'll enable the system assigned managed identity. Everything else looks good, so we click next. You decide the monitoring required for your organization. And then in advanced, these details are completely down to you and your own policies for your instance deployments. But for me, I'm keeping this simple, so I'll leave it blank. Any tags you wish to add? I don't. So I'll review. And then once it's reviewed, all looks good. We'll click create. Once you're happy, that is. There we go. Click create. And the deployment has started. This typically in Azure will take about two to three minutes, but we'll speed up this process and we'll skip directly to it. Here we go. We now have a fully stood up Gigamon Cloud Suite Fabric Manager deployment. As you can see there, the image and all the details are configured as necessary. At this stage, we want to ensure that this particular VM, the fabric manager, has the correct rights to the resource manager to perform its various functions. So in order to do this, we need to assign the managed identity that we've created earlier. In order to do this, click access control or I am. And here we can attest the permissions. So I want to add a new assignment, add a role. If we click privileged administrative roles. Now I'm going to go with contributor. This will provide the necessary roles, but you can also define a set of custom roles specifically for the fabric manager. Click on manage identity, select the managed identity we wish to assign. We'll review and then assign. If Azure is happy with that, and it is, everything is now okay. So the fabric manager can launch the necessary fabric images, we must accept the terms and condition end user license agreement. To do this, we'll go do it through the CLI, but we could also do it through PowerShell or the portal itself. So I'm logging in here to our tenant. Once I'm authenticated, there are three commands to issue. Those three commands, respecting to the controllers that will be enabled. So first of all, the main user agreement. So this is command for that. That was successful, so we can see the versions that we're entitled to use. And as we're deploying 6.6, .6, you can see at the bottom 6.6, .6, we're enabled to use there. This is the second command, 
So this is for the controller for the UTCV agents. That was also successful. And then the last command, which what it would have done would have been for the B series controllers. Then we log in. And what we have then is the terms and conditions once again. It will ask us to change our passwords. We're going through this at three times the speed here. But it's a very simple process. Old password, new password, confirm it. It will log you out and then we'll log in again. Now that we have the Fabric Manager deployed, we now start the configuration process. So once we log in, we're presented with the dashboard and on the left hand side, we have the various menu items. We'll start with uh, the inventory. And as we've deployed in Azure, that's where we'll start. Completely blank at the moment, but we'll soon fill this up. So let's start by looking at the credentials. So this is the credentials for the managed identity. There's nothing really to configure here, but as you can see, so we know it's there and uh, is there available for us to use. Now I want to configure and uh, set up a new monitoring domain. We'll give it a name. So the monitoring domain is effectively where we want to monitor from. So where our source is going to be located. Tenant, subscription, resource group, that kind of thing. What connection we're going to use to connect into that monitoring domain. In our case, it's going to be the managed identity. And if that's configured, it will then populate the various subscription IDs. We're now selecting the region. So where we're going to deploy all of the fabric components. And then we'll select the various resource groups that we require access into. So this would include the management, um, the location where the vector centers are going to be, but then also the sources for the instances where we're going to deploy the agents. Once we're happy with that, we'll save and go to the next process whereby we'll select the connection we've just made or created. We've just called it connection there. The network we're going to be deploying into or the VNet. We'll leave the SSH key for a later moment till the end. Select the resource group we're going to be deploying the various components into. So those components will be the V series and the controller, UTCV controller. The security group, this was created when we created the fabric manager. So we're just using that one. It's completely open, no restrictions. We'll select the size for the T controller. We'll also do the same for the V series nodes as well. We'll leave them as default, as you see there, you can configure different sizes, different configurations, such as uh, virtual uh, network interfaces. The subnet we're going to be deploying into, the management region, and then uh, no key, more well, SSL key. So what we can do for the agents is actually encrypt the data, the captured data from the agent to the V series. But in our case, we're not doing that. We're just going to VXLAN encapsulate it. Now from this part of the configuration, this will be the tool subnet. This will be the Vectra sensor. So where is that going to be located? And which security group do we wish to use to connect to it? Now, of course, if we're, uh, from the V-series to the Vectra sensor, we're going to need uh, opened SSH HTTPS. Now, we seem to be happy with the rest of that. Ah, before we click Save, remember to paste in the public key.
And there we go. So the VCTV controller is okay. And the V series is now okay. Now that we have the main configuration, we need to start with the tunnel. Now the tunnel is basically telling where Gigamon we wish to send the traffic. In our case, it's going to be the vector sensor. So open up the inventory, go to tunnel specifications and create. Give it a name, the encapsulation we wish to use, in our case, VXLAN. The traffic will always be outbound. The VXLAN ID, we'll just select one in this case. We'll leave the UDP port the same and the IP address of the sensor or the load balancer. And there we have it, simple process. Now we tie this all together with creation of a monitoring session. So in order to do that, we'll go to Tunnels, Azure, New Monitoring Session. We'll give it a name, select the monitoring domain and the connection that we created earlier. Select Next. And then we're presented with this nice drag and drop imagery of what's actually going to happen in terms of the traffic. So we have the various components along the left hand side in terms of maps and the tunnels, and we want to drag and drop a new map onto the grid. And here we configure. So this is basically telling Gigmon what it is we want to capture. We can filter on that and do all kinds of things with the appropriate licenses. So in this case, we're going to set conditions and there are a plethora of conditions that we can actually set here. Tagging particular protocols, if you have the appropriate license to do so. But we're only interested in really the IP version, IPv4. So we select that. And then hit the save once we're happy. That's our map completed. We then go to our tunnels select the vector sensor tunnel that we've created in a previous step, drag that onto the grid, and then we'll drag and drop from the red point over to the vector sensor. That is now telling Gigamon to send via this particular tunnel to the, the IP address we configured in that tunnel. Once we're happy, we hit the deploy, and all the various components will now come together to create that policy to push it out to the agents. And there we have it. Successful, completed Gigamon deployment within Azure. Thank you for watching.